I am Professor Kathy Campbell and I am in the Earth Science program. I teach paleontology, sedimentology, paleo environments, and astrobiology. And so my area is really looking at life and how it interacts with the surface of the Earth and the history of life on Earth and on other planets, maybe on other planets as well. So I went to Yellowstone as part of a project. I have funding from the Royal Society of New Zealand, Marston Fund. We're looking at some of the earliest life on Earth. So in 2019, we drilled a core into Western Australia in the Pilbara, which is way out in the northwestern part of Australia. And so we are looking at what kind of environments early life was living in, in the rocks in that core. And so we're going around looking for places where we think uh, are similar today to what it might have been like about three and a half billion years ago. And so hot springs are one of the environments that we're looking at. And so we look at New Zealand hot springs and also we work with collaborators over in Yellowstone. And so we were looking at how hot springs form, how do they turn microbes into stone, and then uh, what kind of signal might be left in the deep time geological record to help us find the earliest signs of life. And there are also implications for going to Mars in the fact that there are what look to be ancient hot spring deposits on Mars that are the same age as the ones out in Australia. And so we use the Yellowstone and the New Zealand examples to try to help us understand kind of what are the fingerprints of life when you go back in time that far. It's not so easy to determine what was life back then, but we know life evolved because we're here now. And so um, we were looking at those kinds of settings and those kinds of environments for, for earliest life. The highlight of the trip was the team, number one. Great team from all over, from Argentina, from New Zealand, from Australia, and from the US. And everybody working together and coordinating together in a really like a nice way where we all are helping the students learn, but also getting this great information from those hot springs. And then being out in the wilderness and seeing you know bear tracks, grizzly bear tracks, and elk tracks and bison all over the place and so just really remembering that wild places are really wild and that we're there as visitors and so that part I also really loved. One of the crazy things was that uh, there are all these different kinds of hot pools and they're all different colors and they have different kinds of organisms in them and one of them was called Campbell's soup because it looks like tomato soup and one of them, we had other crazy names. Um, one of them looked a lot like if you took a minion in the movies and um, you know how minions sit on the photocopy machines and make copies. There was one pool that looked just like what would, a minion would do. So we named that minion pool. And so we had a lot of fun with that and just keep, we kept finding surprisingly like new pools, some that were the shape of serpents and out there, like there's 10,000 hot pools out there and nobody knows very much about lots of them. I mean. The tourist areas, yes, everybody goes there, but we were out kind of in the middle of nowhere and learning like for the first time about the pools and why they're, why they're there and what kinds of organisms, extreme organisms and extreme life, what they're like, um, how they turn to stone and then how that might relate to early life was really fun because everywhere we looked, there was something different. So that was nice. So we've got a lot of like geochemistry to do. So we're gonna look at the waters and the sediments and the microbes and how all of this can end up being rock that's super old. And because scientists fight all the time over the earliest life and the earliest rocks. Um, and so we're gonna contribute to that and show how our work fits into the big picture of understanding where life came from. And so our next step is to kind of process the samples and run some analyses here and also over in the US and then we'll write it up and present it and hopefully our students will um, you know, end up at really nice places for jobs afterwards. So there's kind of a whole conveyor belt that we run through when we have a new research project. What I really uh, am thinking about a lot lately is that making observations in nature are like, we wanna understand how the natural world works and so a lot of what happens is we see things and we go, yes, I can explain that and I can explain this. And then when you see something that you can't explain, it's like an, a door or an opportunity into kind of a whole new world. And I think it's great to just step in and especially when you have great people to work with who come alongside with you and step in and 
explore, you know, new terrains, new possibilities. You know, we're trying to get a mission to Mars and this all helps build up all of that. And so I think you open the door every time you, you, you aren't sure about what something means and you go, okay, let's step through and find out. So I think it's important for students, especially, to be willing to go out there and have a look and see what's out there and, and ask questions and be curious. My strength is to look back in time. And so I like to look back into deep time and that's what I'm really good at. And yes, we wanna to go to Mars with our rovers and you know look at the old rocks and try to imagine when Mars had active volcanoes and active hot springs and an atmosphere that was thicker and running water everywhere. And so I'm really good at imagining the past and trying to uh, study how it used to be. So I'm less uh, interested in exploring personally in outer space, but I think rovers can go and do the job, bring back the samples to Earth and we'll, and we'll work on them from here. So I'd like other people to go to Mars, maybe Elon Musk, and I'd like to stay here and look back in deep time. That's what I'm good at.